Hi, my name is Michael Martin, and this is... Alexandria. And today we are making... Macaroni and cheese. And this show is called... The Full Measure. High five? Let's do a freeze frame high five. This show is about making food in the easy way that you normally do at home and then in a way that takes a little bit more effort and then comparing both and seeing if the payoff is worth the amount of time and effort that you put into the meal. It's not necessarily about deciding whether Kraft mac and cheese is as good as a gourmet mac and cheese. The show's about deciding is the high end more effort mac and cheese worth your time. That's what I said. Let's make, let's make some blue box. Cheers. We start by making a very simple version of mac and cheese. Everyone has made this before and honestly it took me much longer to edit this section together than it did to actually make this box of mac and cheese. You start by adding the macaroni to a pot of boiling water, stirring occasionally, let the pasta cook for 7 minutes or until tender, strain the pasta and add in the rest of the ingredients. I like to start with the butter because it cools down the pan and the noodles a bit so you don't scald your milk. Add in your cheese, give it a stir and you're done. I want to be very clear that this in no way compares to a from scratch mac recipe, but this is the baseline of how absolutely simple it can be to make. While this box certainly isn't gourmet, I have a lot of fond memories eating this stuff, and I'm pretty excited to try it again after a long blue box hiatus. Alexander is going to join me, and after we cut, we actually polish this off for lunch. We make good food, but neither of us is turning down junk food, ever. I made you fourth grade lunch, like sick day. <laughs> <laughs> This is kind of like a sick day that we've been on for a month. Yeah, and you're just always making me lunch. When but you see, when you look at this, are you like, that looks good. It does look good. I want to eat it, because I'm having that reaction right now. It's got that like, that thick. It's not good. <laughs> it, it, it is what it is. It is what it is. You can't compare this to anything. It doesn't taste like anything you've ever had. You know. But it is just that, like you go in for you like, oh that looks good, like I remember it, I have all of these like emotional attachments to it, and then you go and you have it and you're like. As an adult, yeah. yeah. As a kid, I would eat. This is great. I would eat that constantly. I think it's just time to make the other the other recipe. Like your adult mac and cheese. Yeah. Which I like, I hate it when people say that, but this is, this is kind of your juvenile mac and cheese. Well, let's make some really good mac and cheese. Let's. <laughs> The full measure recipe I chose for mac and cheese comes from BA's Best List. This recipe is very classic and built with a bechamel, one of the mother sauces. Not only will you be making mac and cheese, but you'll be learning kitchen fundamentals, educational comfort food. We begin by melting our butter and toasting our panko breadcrumbs over medium heat. Toss them around every 30 seconds or so until they are deep and rich and brown. Remove from the pan, toss with a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt, a quarter cup of Parmesan, and a couple of tablespoons of fresh thyme. Next, we've got 12 full ounces of cheese to grate, by hand, because I don't own a box grater. Yeah, this sucks, but I do own a food processor. Fit that with your grater attachment and go to town grating the cheddar, fontina, and gruyere. The finer you get them, the easier it'll be to melt in your sauce. Next, bring a pot of water to a boil and add your pasta. The recipe calls for cavatappi, which would no doubt be better, but my grocery store shelves still look like folks are hoarding. Shells it is. Cook these until al dente or just before. They have 20 minutes in the oven ahead of them, and you can pull them early from the water. Fresh pasta, also a no-go here. The baking would pretty much destroy it. If you are going to use fresh, make sure you use something extruded or something thicker that can hold up to the long baking time. Dice a half a medium onion that was missing from the nice layout of all the ingredients before and saute with the garlic over medium heat. Once the onions are fragrant and slightly translucent, add two tablespoons of flour and a few additions, all while whisking constantly. Let the roux cook for one full minute before you add your milk. When you do add the milk, make sure you add very warm milk. You can either do this in another pan to a bare simmer or microwave it until very warm. The milk is also incorporated in small batches and you continue whisking throughout this process. Like, don't stop, even if you're cleaning up or wiping down the counter. To your bechamel, add all of your cheese, again in batches. Continuing to use your whisk will help incorporate the cheese and makes the sauce very smooth. Keep stirring until all of the cheese is completely melted. Season with kosher salt, add dried mustard powder, and cayenne pepper. Make sure to taste your seasoning before adding your now cooled pasta to the sauce. And finally, stir everything to combine. 
I don't really own a baking dish that would be appropriate for this size, but I do have a pie plate. The recipe calls for any two quart baking dish. This pie plate will definitely do, especially since I couldn't find the cavatappi and we use shells. Place the whole thing in a preheated 350 degree oven for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, remove from the oven and top with your herb and breadcrumb mixture. Put this back in the oven for an additional eight to 10 minutes or until the cheese is bubbling up through the sides. Once it's finished baking, remove from the oven and cool for 15 minutes. Prepare for the longest 15 minute wait of your life. Not only would you burn the absolute crap out of your mouth, but the sauce needs to cool and thicken just a little bit before you serve. The wait will absolutely be worth it. This is some of the best mac and cheese I've ever had, which is an odd thing to say for such a simple dish, but this is so well balanced from the base of the onions and garlic and the bechamel to the bright herb flavor of thyme and the breadcrumb. For such a rich and simple recipe, this is a very complex and balanced bite. Yeah, actually, yeah, that was the first question I was gonna ask you. Like, what does it smell like? Cheese. It smells like cheese? I smell like garlic first. <laughs> this has the absolute opposite of what the box stuff did, whereas like, there's so many layers of flavor going on. You have the like, oh, man. the rich, like super rich bechamel milk flavor is like a really heavy base. But then you have the like onion in the mid range and like the garlic that has that like almost kind of like heat to it. And then you have the like thyme, the like fresh thyme up top. So it's like a very complete full bite. There's a lot of really good textures in there, obviously, with the bread crumbs. Oh yeah, you, you yeah, like textures so good. much. This sauce is just like, it really coats those noodles and brings everything together, but like those bread crumbs are nice and good. Sometimes when you have like a meal that is just like kind of a soft, mushy texture, having that crunch to it is mm -hmm. so nice and that really has that. <laughs> yeah, time. having having all of that in there does make it feel like this is a meal. Right, it does, it feels like a whole thing. Yeah. I think the best, the absolute best way to spend your time making this would be for, if you showed up to a party or a potluck oh, with yeah. this, I, I'm pretty sure this would outshine some main course like meat dishes. Yeah, that, that's some, that's some mac and cheese. Yeah, I mean if someone showed up and like made steaks and you brought this, this would compete with the steaks, this I think. Great. This is really nice. And finally, here's our chart of worthiness, where it measures effort versus how much payoff you get from a recipe. Obviously, the Kraft Blue Box is almost no work, but it also isn't that good. BA's best mac and cheese isn't that much work, but it is so good. I think it's completely worth the time. Thank you for watching our video. Please click like and subscribe, and we'll see you next week. Showed up to a party or a potluck oh, with yeah. this. Like, this, this mac and cheese would... <laughs>